Determine which of the following lists of vectors are linearly independent. And there's five lists to determine. Well, first I should understand the problem. And it seems to me that I need to know what linearly independent means. So let me look that up. Let's see. The vectors V1 up to VR are linearly independent if a1 v1 plus plus a r v r equals zero has only the solution a1 equals equals a r equals zero that's the definition of linearly independent according to my book. And if I was asked to prove whether they are linearly independent, I would have to use that. But it doesn't say prove, it says determine. So that means I'm allowed to use some other rules about linearly independent that I know. But I'll check those rules as I go. I think, rather than trying to find all the rules right now. So let's start A. Let's look at this list of vectors. OK, well, one of them is a zero vector. And that's one of the rules I remember. If a set of vectors has a zero vector in it, it's automatically linearly dependent. Let me see if I can remember why. Yeah, because if, if this one here, this V1, is a zero vector, then I can just choose A1 to be 5 or 7 or minus 3, and all the rest to be zero, and I've got a non-zero solution. So that makes it not linearly independent. OK, so that answers that one linearly dependent since 1 is the 0 vector. Excellent. What about part B? So that's just a single vector. Okay, well that would mean that um, I'm just looking at this. Well, the only solution is a1 equals 0 because that's not the 0 vector. So I've got a single vector that's not the 0 vector, so it must be linearly dependent. So linearly independent since single... non-zero vector. Okay, part C. Well, this one doesn't look so easy. But, I do know that these are vectors in R3 because they've got three coordinates. And I know that it's actually not possible to have more than three vectors in R3 being linearly independent. Because normally what I do is I put them in columns in a matrix and row reduce. And I'm always guaranteed to have a free variable there. So that's my other rule. I've got too many vectors to be linearly independent. They have to be linearly dependent. So linearly dependent since more than three vectors in R3. Not too bad so far. Let's look at the next one. OK, we're in R4 now, so we're allowed to have four linearly independent vectors, so that one's not going to help me. None of them's a zero vector. So it looks like I might have to do the definition but there's one more rule. There's another rule that says I just have to check to see if they're linear combinations of each other. And in fact, I just have to check to see if any of them is a linear combination of the ones before. So let's have a look. Well, this one's not the zero vectors. So that's OK. This one's not a linear combination of that because it's not a multiple of it. That's good. This one's not a linear combination of any of those two because it's got a one in this position. And these two have zeros here, and there's no way of doing a combination of them to get a 1. 
So that's fine. And now let's look at these three. Well, again, I want a 1 here, and all these have zeros in those positions, so there's no way of doing a combination to produce the last one from them. So none of them is a linear combination of the others before in the list. So that makes them linearly independent by um, this nice theorem that I'm looking at in my book. So D linearly independent since none is a linear combination of those before it in the list. That leaves part E. Let's go have a look. So none of them's a zero vector. I haven't got too many of them for R three. Doesn't seem particularly easy to see if any of them is a linear combination of the ones before. So I think I might just have to use the definition. So we want to solve a1 times 1, 2, 3, plus a2 times 3, 2, 1, plus a3 times 2, 1, 3, is equal to the zero vector. And I, ha I know how to do that. I just put them all as columns in a matrix and row reduce. 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, 2, 1, 3, 0, 0, 0. So I would want an identity column there with a 1 here and zeros below it. Already have a 1, so I just need to do my row operations to get the 0. So that would be my new row. 2 would be row 2 minus 2 of row 1. My new row 3 would be row 3 minus 3 of row 1. So I haven't changed row 1. 0 minus 1 minus 3, 0. 0 minus 8 minus 3, 0. Next. I'd like an identity matrix column here with a 1 here. So I'll multiply row 2 by minus 1. So my new row 2 is minus my old row 2. Haven't changed row 1. Haven't changed row 3. Multiply this one by minus 1. Okay, so I'd like identity column here, i like a 1 here, I've got a 1 there, I want zeros above and below. Actually I don't think I need a 0 above and below, I just need to see if it's possible to get more than one solution. And that would happen if I get a row of zeros at the bottom of this matrix. So. Really, I only need to make a zero below the diagonal to see if I can do that. So I would be wanting to produce a zero where that minus eight is. So my new row three is row three minus eight plus eight of row one. So haven't changed that row haven't changed that row, 0, 0, minus 3 plus 8 times 3 would be 21. Well, I can see now that I could finish that off. I could divide that 21 by 21 and get a 1 there, and then I could finish these row operations to get an identity matrix. So there's going to be a unique solution for A1, A2, and A3, and they're all going to have to be 0. So yes, they are linearly independent. No free variables. So linearly independent. And that's the end of the problem.